thanks to our patrons who keep the dream going. Hey guys, welcome back to the Gypsy Galley and thank you for joining us midweek again. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make ice cream on a boat in a jar. I haven't tried this before so I don't know that it's going to work. So this is kind of an experiment but I saw mason jar ice cream on a TV show that I was watching and I'm like, is that really a thing? So I looked it up and it looks pretty simple. I don't know if it's going to work on the boat only because I know that usually ice cream needs to be at minus 15 to minus 20 degrees Celsius for it to be frozen, I guess, optimally. Our freezer, the little gauge, says that we're at minus 15 now because I just recently thawed the fridge, which is pretty cold because usually our freezer doesn't get that cold. I'd say it usually hovers around minus 10, and I know that if we were to try to buy store-bought ice cream and stick it in the freezer, it's really liquidy come two hours later. So hopefully this works, and because I'm making it in a small jar, I'm hoping that it'll freeze it well enough and the minus 15 that we're sitting at will do the trick. You only need two main ingredients to make it, which is whipping cream and condensed milk. I found this in the islands, which is kind of cool because I haven't seen this back at home, but it's condensed milk in a tube. I like this better because I don't have to open a whole can of condensed milk and I can just use what I need from the tube and throw it back in the fridge. Cream that you're gonna need, online it did say that we needed at least 36% fat, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> I only found 35%. Hopefully this works. First, we're going to need a jar. It's suggested that you use a mason jar. I don't have any spare empty mason jars right now, but I do have some glass containers. The idea behind using a glass jar versus a plastic container is that when you're shaking the ice cream, which you'll see, it could get messy with a plastic container that doesn't seal as well. So I'm just going to use glass and I've pre-chilled the jar for about 30 minutes. Chill jar here. We got the cream. I poured a cup of the cream into the jar. And next I'm going to take about four tablespoons of the sweetened condensed milk and stir it into the jar. It's also suggested that the condensed milk be cold as well, so I had this in the fridge. I'm gonna stir that in just so it's not all sitting at the bottom. That condensed milk is gonna sink. I kinda hope it turns out and I kinda hope it doesn't because, well obviously I want it to turn out because it'd be delicious and if you guys know me, you know I love ice cream so if we can make this at home then that would just be pretty sweet. I also hope it doesn't turn out because we'd be in a lot of trouble because as you can see, this is a lot of cream and sugar. <laughs> Let's see, so we're just gonna stir the condensed milk enough that it's not sitting at the bottom. And once it looks like it's kind of all mixed in decently, it's gonna be the fun part. Mm, that's pretty good. So we're gonna close the lid on the jar I'm gonna shake for about five minutes. And right now, when I shake it, you can hear the liquid. I don't know if the mic's gonna pick that up, but you can hear liquid sloshing. You should start to hear no liquid. It'll start to just be airy. Probably time how long I'm shaking. Only a minute in, my arm's getting tired. <laughs> but a minute in, I'm starting to hear less liquid. Still liquidy, but it's a little bit less. And now apparently you can overshake it, kind of like when you over whip whipping cream and it gets all separated and the fat starts to get chunky there's no going back from that so you definitely don't want to over mix it but doing this by hand i don't think i'm going to over mix it because i'm already tired what are we okay two minutes in and i hear the liquid's almost gone okay i hear a little bit of sloshing if i really shake it sounds halfway there okay i've shaken the jar for exactly five minutes and I don't really hear much liquid, only if I really give it a really big shake, then I can hear that there's liquid, but 
I don't want to over shake it. Ooh, that looks good. That actually looks perfect. It looks like how melted ice cream would look. You can make different flavors. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla essence or extract. This stuff we got back in Grenada. I don't think I could ever go back to using artificial vanilla extract after using this because it just smells so good. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like fresh baked cookies. Love it. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of that in this jar. So if you like vanilla, you can just keep it at that. Just use vanilla extract. Or if you want fruit flavored, you just take a little bit of whatever fruit puree that you want and stir a little bit of that in. So we have raspberry puree it's here in a little jar. So we're gonna just take that and pop it into the jar as well. And just put like a teaspoon, not very much at all. Cause I don't wanna, I'm scared of it diluting it too much. But you just stir that in with the spoon. We don't have blueberry puree, but we have frozen blueberries. So I'm just gonna mush those up. This is our designated potato mashing fork when we don't wanna use the big masher and clean it. Travis kinda of just bent this fork one day and it's been good for, um, I don't know, making streusel. Kinda of like one of those pastry, I don't know what they're called, those pastry cutter things for streusel. I don't know, I'll find the name of it. I could probably blend it, but I'm a little lazy. That just involves too much washing. That's delicious. Okay, so I stirred all that. And I think I actually almost got to the point where I over shook it because look at that. You can almost see that there are little curds. But when I tasted it, it's not, thankfully. So I think it should still turn out okay. And now I'm gonna transfer it from the glass jar into a little plastic container to freeze it because I think it'll just be easier to scoop because this little jar won't be ideal to scoop out of. Now I'm just gonna pop this into the fridge and chill it for several hours. We'll see how it turns out. So I've frozen it overnight and it actually looks like it hardened quite nicely. Looks like it's sweated a little bit, but let's test it out. We don't have an ice cream scoop, so I'm gonna have to try to scrape this out with a spoon. Travis, you wanna taste test it? What flavor? Blueberry, raspberry, but I don't think I flavored it enough. It just tastes like kind of blueberry, raspberry whipped cream, but like thicker. Like ice cream? Mm. Sort of. I did just brush my teeth though, so I can't. Probably still go out and get ice cream. So I think because I overshook it a little bit, it did curdle up a little bit, which is why I'm kind of getting this breaking apart. So it's kind of hard to scoop. Yeah, it breaks apart more. As you can see, it's almost like a goat cheese looking consistency. It still tastes all right, but I'm gonna redo it and see what it tastes like without over shaking it. After the first failed attempt, I remade it and only shook the jar of cream and condensed milk for three minutes instead of five and got a consistency like I have here where it slides off the back of the spoon. Then I gently stirred half a cup of pureed strawberries and did not shake it again after adding the puree. Then I poured it into a plastic container again and put it in the freezer for several hours. And the consistency came out a lot better this time around. So I've had the ice cream sitting for about six hours in the freezer and I must say it tastes pretty good. The strawberry came out really good. I will say it is pretty heavy because obviously you saw the ingredients, it's pure cream. So a little bit really goes a long way to curb the sweet tooth. I don't know that I would be making this on a regular basis because it is really sweet, 
but if you're in an area that you can't get ice cream, maybe it'll melt by the time you get it back to your boat or whatever. That's usually our dilemma. So for something quick like that, if you're really craving, this definitely hits the spot, but it wouldn't be something that I would indulge in all the time just because it is so heavy in cream. It's good to know that you can make ice cream on a boat. Thanks for joining us in the Gypsy Galley this week. If you give the recipe a try, be sure to let us know how it turns out, and we'll see you back here on Friday for our regular scheduled episode.